Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week, I'm really excited to welcome Nate Johnson. Nate is the founder and owner of Rev Coffee. Joining me in studio, as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. Oh, of all the years of uh, being in business, that one thing. Um, I think the thing that I finally get is make sure that you don't let each day like control your who you are, but you, who you are control that. And so the biggest thing I've learned was that the your situations don't let it dictate who you are, basically. So I, lo- I love that. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, so many times in business, it's a roller coaster, and if you let each highs and lows dictate how you're going to act within your business, then it's going to be kind of a train wreck. That's right. So you've had some highs and lows, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody, you yeah. know, I have so many people that come on the show and, and listen in It's business owners and entrepreneur, but I'm going to tell you, Nate, you are an entrepreneur. You're <laughs> an entrepreneur's entrepreneur. And I guess you know that, right? I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've, I've always, I, I enjoyed working with you when we did. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a fan as well. You know what I mean? But I like watching you get into different things. I love watching how your mind works, but that's a big deal. Yes. Th- don't let the the moment dictate who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's huge. So um, let's go back to Eunice when you you opened your first coffee shop. Tell me about that. <laughs> Why, why'd you do it? Okay. And and uh, what was that all about? And then how how's it growing into Rev? Man? One of the things that made me want to open up a coffee shop, uh, specifically in, in Eunice, was because so many of my friends were leaving the small town. There was, you know, the whole, I guess, uh, uh, conversation was, you know, there's nothing here. There's nothing to offer. And my philosophy was, well, let me offer something to Eunice, you know, kind of leave it better than where I found it kind of thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, as a person going, you know, living in Eunice, obviously growing up and born and raised there and going to college there and not having a single place to go and study, hang out, network, whatever it was, I realized that I wanted to do that for the town. I wanted them to have something that I didn't have. Yeah. And so it kind of was born out of a, out of a need I felt. It wasn't necessarily an innovative idea of opening up a coffee shop, but it was definitely a risk during that time 17 years ago when I opened up a shop in Eunice. And not only that, but even more so a risk when I opened up downtown, which in every city, that's the heart of the city. Yeah. After looking for a while for a building, that's when I, I found the downtown. I was 21. I was going to school for, for business and the plan was to open up a coffee shop. But I guess kind of even before that, I actually wanted to be a rock star. That was really what I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, of course, that <laughs> that didn't last. Still play music, but uh, but that wasn't you know obviously the role that I that I took. In some way, I still kind of connect that with my coffee shops because when I opened up Mosaic, you know, have a stage where people can play music and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. but which I actually came up with the name before I found the building, and when I was looking, the building had mosaic floors. Yeah. So yeah. it was kind of a uh, sign it's to a me. It's a sign, yeah. Like, you're this, right. this is it. And so, but the building was a was a wreck. I mean, the roof was leaking. The only bathroom that was in there was on a platform because the way that the the plumbing was back in, you know, 100 years ago when they laid that building, <laughs> the plumbing was pretty much parallel with the building, you know. So there was really no <laughs> getting plumbing to it. So yet they had to build a toilet higher than the plumbing. So, so the water. Yeah. It, yeah. And I'm talking about high. It was like a big step. It was like four foot off the ground or whatever it was. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was a shell of a building when we, when we got, got a hold of it. That's so, cool. Yeah. Well, the, when you saw a gap in the market, you wanted to do something great for your community yeah. and you understood that there were risk involved, you know? Yes. And, and so I bet you that some of those days challenged you to not let the day dictate how you behave, right? You know, I, it took a while before I learned that lesson. Um, uh, <laughs> but one of the things that I, you know, I felt very confident that this could work, even though during that time, having a local coffee shop was kind of considered, you know, risky business, you know, it was kind of considered, why would you do that when they, you know, Starbucks exists and, you know, well, you know, the bigger names out there, I call them the red and green giant. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, having a local place was, it was hardly any anyone doing it really in, in Louisiana at the time. And if you did have one, you know, the odds of it working and surviving was, was, was low. That's right. So, That's right. but, uh, but yeah. So what was your next move after uh, Mosaic? My plan when I opened up Mosaic was never to, to leave. You know, I didn't really have the, I guess, drive, if you will, or, or maybe 
I was just content. I'm not really sure what it was, but or uh, maybe it was just because it was so much work in to, yeah, to build sure, something because sure. it was an uphill battle. We renovated a building where downtown wasn't really thriving at the time. He was 21, so I was, he was young. And having a coffee shop that didn't have a drive through was another challenge within itself. Um, so we had some challenges. So me opening up more stores were not in the cards. But about three years into it, I was asked to open up a shop in Lafayette. And so after a lot of thought, I decided to move to Lafayette to open up the shop with this person. And that's what actually got me kind of out of Eunice. To Lafayette. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. into Lafayette. Because um, it was never never in the courts. So when you came to Lafayette, that's where the Rev brand came in, mm-hmm. I guess, and Rev Labs. Yes. So today, tell us about where you are with Rev, because I'm fascinated by that. Yeah. After about two and a half years of helping run the shop in Lafayette, mm-hmm. uh, I realized that I wanted to really get back to you know, who I was, which was being an entrepreneur, you know, not that I didn't have my own business still in Eunice, but I wanted to just run my own, own stores. And then I realized that if I was going to be a part of this industry, I wanted to be in it in its entirety as much as I could possibly be in part of it. And yeah. so that avenue was roasting coffee. After I kind of had that epiphany, if you will, I decided to learn everything I could possibly learn about roasting coffee. Uh, I felt pretty confident that I could make it work. I pretty much put all my savings, everything into starting this brand, starting the roasting company. Cause it was kind of a dream of mine to do it. I just didn't know that it was possible. Yeah. And that's where Rev came from. It was a dream and Rev in French means to dream. And so that's kind of the whole, I wanted to be culturally appropriate in Louisiana and, you know, it just made most sense for me for having a French name. So that's right. And then I had asked my friend that was working with me at the other location that he wanted to be a part of it. So uh, he ended up joining a longtime friend of mine. So yep, we're business yep. partners and stuff. All right. So there are a couple of, I reach over when I have a light bulb moment. There are a couple of moments there. One where you said, you know what? I, I need to be true to myself. I'm an entrepreneur. I need to grow vertically with yeah. this thing. And so you went from having a coffee shop to being the roaster. Mm-hmm. And I know you're involved with the equipment side and, and you do consulting and everything else. Right. So when mm-hmm. you said go in, jump in, you you jumped in. Right. And you you can and do everything on the, the roastery side of that business. Correct. Shops, everything. It, it, it's really fascinating for somebody who might be listening to think, man, you know, I can't, I can sit here and do one thing or I can go all in. Yeah. And, and that's what you've done. It's, it's been a big payoff. That's huge. I'd be lying if I knew it would get me where I am now. <laughs> but uh, like I thought back with my shop in Eunice and just really believing in what I was doing and that I had something to offer, I really felt what we were doing as a roaster was the same thing yeah. because I know when I opened my store, there wasn't really, there weren't really a lot of people to ask for advice. And so it was kind of a way for us to be able to pivot, to set ourselves up to help people open up stores, be successful, live out their dream as well, all the while providing a great coffee product that we, that we roast ourselves and, and, you know, the, the sourcing that we do. And then of course, all the years of experience that we've gained to impart that on people, opening up their own stores. We, we help yeah. people from start to finish. If they're looking at a location, you know, we can, you know, help them decide if it's a great location and we sell equipment as well. Cause we partner with some of the biggest names out there so we can help them, you know, build their, what kind of equipment they need for their stores, um, bar layout, training their staff. And we, spent even time and energy in building a a training lab as well to aid people on, you know, doing what they do best. Yeah. Not not to be obnoxious, but there's another light bulb moment there. So I'll tell a very quick story. Sure. I had a guy who I suggested, you know, start an online course to show people how to do what you do. Yeah. You know, and open them. But he was a little bit short sighted and he he thought we were going to create competitors. You're saying exactly what I was saying. Look, if you're the expert and you have the ability to help others, even if they become competitors, for example, you are there helping people realize their dreams. You're helping people open up coffee shops like because you were there Mm -hmm. and you see another gap in the market. There's nobody there to guide you, counsel you on how to do this and and avoid mistakes. Right. So that is a That's a huge deal for our listeners. I appreciate that, too. Yeah. You know, in the specialty coffee industry was very scarce in Louisiana. So 
to be able to create that type of environment and be successful was was few and far between. So, and and people kept everything close to the chest in the coffee yeah, sure, industry. Sure. Uh, well, in, in a lot of industries, of course. But I, you know, I was in the mindset: I'm an open book. I want to help people out, grow. I, I really had issues with people. You know, yeah, yeah. learning about what I've learned. I mean, I've given people recipes of ours. I've, I, like, I just want people to succeed because it, yeah. it works out for for everyone in that sense. And you, you, if the only way to create a market is to have more of it, and so if you're the your only person doing it, it's going to be hard to, to sell yourself on that stuff. So yeah, yeah. you have to have more people doing it. So I'm gonna shift gears a little bit. Sure. Your life's changed a lot in the last few months. Yes, last nine months. Yes, <laughs> and so congratulations to Thank both you. you and Courtney. Uh, have a beautiful baby, Roma. Tell tell me about how your life has changed since Roma came. Oh, that's uh, it's, um, a lot. I know. Um, you know, I I told uh told my wife. I said I'm either gonna work really hard after, or I'm not gonna want to work at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, oddly enough, I kind of fell somewhere in the middle, I think. I worked just as hard, but I started working hard in a different way. And and that the time that I have, I I, I want to make the most of it with the, with the family. So I try to make sure. OK, yeah. here we go. <laughs> here we go. All right, keep going. This is that's huge. You hear the, the whole cliche saying that, you know, you know, you know, play, play hard and work hard, you know, it's kind of, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. But. I also believe in resting hard, you know, so in getting that time with my family is the, probably the most important thing for me right now. So making sure that I compartmentalize what work it needs yep. and what can wait to, so that way I can spend time and give the attention that I need to my family. Because there's so many times that we get bogged down in the little things that don't really matter or you can't control until the next day or next week or even can't control at all. Yeah, for sure. And making sure you you kind of like let that stuff go yeah, and yeah. and because it was really hard for me to do that and i think family put that in perspective for me what was really important in work and growing the business and what is important about life and yeah, um, yeah. so it really just it just had this great divide of what was and it showed very very clearly what those things were and yeah, so that no, thing no is the biggest it. thing i've learned yeah that's outstanding i um you know i i kind of preach this a lot but we we have these score scoreboards, you know what I mean? Like in sports, you look up and you see how much time you got, you see what the score is. And we look up and we look at money, you know what I mean? We look mm -hmm. at status, success, and sometimes that causes us to forget about and, and lose sight of what's really important. So I love you saying this, man. Mm -hmm. And it, it's yet another light bulb. Oh, mama, <laughs> you're going to have the record. Yeah, but, I'm going uh, to try. Yeah, no, I'm going to get a couple that, more. That's outstanding, <laughs> man. What you, what's coming up next for the Johnson family and for the Rev family? We have a, several goals that we want to have, um, not just, you know, growing. Every business owner, I think, wants to grow. You know, it's just, it's, that's the obvious. But I want to grow in a healthy way. So yeah, for sure. It, not just on the monetary side of things where you, you get your profit margins right and all this other stuff like that. But I also want to grow in the the relationships I build with my team and making sure that is clear on what is defined between each role, uh, which you've helped out on that a lot. Create, I mean, just as simple as that is creating a healthy culture. Like yeah, I, I, yeah. I have this whole saying where it's just I want to create a healthy business. And that, that exactly doesn't right. mean just financial. That means in communication skills and and what roles need to do what and you know how we how we create an experience for our customers you know that's it's a very big thing and how we hire and every, just every that, facet right. of the business it's just it'd yep. be in a healthy spot that's exactly right i love that yep. and, and, another one <laughs> 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 i right, said so that's four light bulb moments <laughs> um and, and again you know you know me i i preach that every day but i think one of the biggest takeaways for me is you realizing how important and you always have you and courtney had a great relationship but the baby coming into focus it's uh you're looking at the right stuff man it's That's a game great. changer yeah it's, no doubt about it it's, it's completely different it's just it, different it, it, yeah, <laughs> it's, no, just, it's, it's awesome man <laughs> so um give me a business tip like if, if you're talking to anybody tell me tell me a nathaniel johnson business tip who you are put it on paper anyone can put paint and a sign and have a building. Anyone can ha do something that's very similar to what business model you're trying to create, but who you are, they can't create because we're all completely 
individuals, right? We we yeah. all have our own thing that drives us, our own personality that has a different spin on certain things, and that you cannot re, uh, recreate because no matter what, your culture is you as a business owner, in my personal opinion. So who you are, put it on paper, create systems, and iron it out very very well. Because yeah, yeah. if you if you don't, you're gonna have a longer road on growth and a healthy company like I talked about. That's one big thing I can say. Yeah. It's just make sure you have those things iron out before you start your business. Yeah. What about influences? Who's had a big influence on you or your life and, and as an entrepreneur? I would say my dad. Mm-hmm. He's probably been the biggest. When I was a kid, my dad started a cabinet shop and um, he started in our backyard. So I remember waking up my dad was up before I was. So he, yeah. uh, he was in, I can hear the, sh- the the saw going on in the shop before I went to school. And then I can hear the saw pretty much going on when I was going to bed. My dad worked from as early as the sun rose, as you know, as late as it possibly can be, and finishing at nine o'clock at night and stuff. So when I, I saw my dad's work ethic, I saw his honesty in business, and that's a big thing. I think that played a bigger part that even my dad realizes, you know, yeah. so- yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say my dad, it's been the biggest, biggest influence for me, um, creating a foundation on what that means to be a hard worker, you know, entrepreneur. You know me, we've worked together. So it's been a while since we've seen each other. You got any questions for me? Oh, what's going on with you besides the podcast? <laughs> oh, this, well, I mean, well, uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of fun, exciting things. My whole deal is helping guys like you have a healthy uh, happy life, prosperous business in life. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have a new project that I'm I'm doing right now, which is less private coaching, one to one coaching, and more individual and group coaching with the companies. And gotcha. so we're bringing a bunch of companies together, basically turning Company Growth Academy into the product, and we're just calling it the Academy. Like it. And so yeah, so companies can uh, join. Only, only way I can scale, you know. Sure. What I mean? So as many people as you have coming into your stores, you work with people who are trying to start up coffee shops, you you reach a lot of people. How do you try to leave them different and better just because they met you? My business model, just in general, we we try to create an experience for people to come in and have a great, great time and to maybe have that next great idea that transcends a little bit of the four walls that we create. So I think it's you know, it's not just a cup of coffee to me. It's it's the, the connections you create. If I have an interaction with someone um, and whether if it's in, in life or in business is that I am an honest person. And I think that's kind of, you know, how I, I want to be in, in, in both in business and in life. I guess that's how I can leave someone with the good impression, I guess, uh, right. or something different or whatever that I'm authentic and what I do and that I'm passionate about what I do and that I care. You know, I truly care this is not not just a product i'm selling you know it's not just something that you you have an exchange with you know it's something that's it's more than that thanks for joining us on i finally get it to learn more about what nate's up to visit our show notes at ifinallygetit.com don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode if you're an entrepreneur a business owner and you have a light bulb moment that you think would help other business owners and entrepreneurs please reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.